had enough of experts, so Michael Gove famously told us during the referendum, but in Budget Week, we have not. Paul Johnson of the Institute for Fiscal Studies is the economist who's been marking the government's card and producing some chilling warnings about our economic future. He's here with me now. I mentioned those warnings right at the top of the show, Paul. Uh, I said that we, you know, we're going to be poorer for longer than we expected, but these are just forecasts, aren't they? They are, but they're based on what's happening at the moment. Real earnings, after you take account of inflation, are falling again now, and that's because inflation is higher following the loss in value of the pound. What the Independent Office of Budget Responsibility have said is, well, look, actually, we look back over our forecast the last six or seven years, they've all been over-optimistic. So it's about time, in their view, to start bringing those forecasts down, particularly in the context of the level of uncertainty that we have going forward. So they will be wrong, but they're as likely to be too optimistic as they are to be too pessimistic. So basically, at this point, you take a ruler and you draw a line from where we are. But as you say, things are going to change. We don't know what's going to happen after Brexit, how the economy is going to operate and so forth. So the, there is, there's a range of possibilities. It could be much brighter than I suggested at the top of the show. There's a, there's a huge round, range of uncertainty around this. I think this is probably the moment of greatest uncertainty that we know about, mm. at least, that we faced in a very, very long time. So it could be brighter. But, as I say, I think they've taken the middle path, so it's okay. just as likely to be even worse than they're suggesting, and I'm what afraid. Would that, what would that feel like for us? Well, at the moment, what it feels like is what it's felt like for quite a long time, which is that real incomes are, are falling, real earnings in particular mm. are falling, so people are feeling a squeeze. And the worry, in a sense, okay. about the OBR's forecast is that they just think that squeeze will, broadly speaking, continue such that earnings in the early 2020s are no higher than they were back in 2008. And, and that okay. really is historically unprecedented. Drie, I think, is the Scottish word for it. <laughs> um, can I ask you about the Labour, <laughs> the Labour proposal, that you can spend £250 billion over 10 years and you get that back in greater economic growth? If you put the investment in, the growth comes afterwards. Well, the most important thing about investment is how you spend it. So it's very easy to talk about big numbers and actually to be fair to the current Chancellor, he is increasing investment to its highest fraction, uh, highest levels of portion of GDP that it's been in at least 40 years. So the Conservatives are doing some of this. What you'll see is if you look back at, for example, the 1997 Labour government, they had big plans to increase investment. And I was in the Treasury at the time, and they literally couldn't get the money out of the door. And that was on a, on a much smaller scale than is being suggested at the moment. So there are real See, sort of technical issues about just making this useful investment, getting the money out of the door and getting value for money for it while you do it. And when it comes to the ambitious plans to renationalise great swathes of the British economy, are there upfront costs in that, in your view? Well, that's a different kind of investment. So if, in a sense, you are paying for an asset what it's worth, then the government balance sheet doesn't change uh, in reality, although the, the, the financial numbers will change. The real issue here is, do you really believe that these things will work so much better in the public sector uh, that that's worth doing? Because certainly, there's, if you look over history, you can have an argument about this, but it's certainly okay. not clear that that's the case. All right. Stay there for now, if you don't mind. I'm going to have a quick word with Barry Gardner, who is here from the...